Well, hello, my Facebook friends and family. Um, here's the big reveal. As you can see behind me, uh, the logo for the radio station Joy 1340 here in Milwaukee. Guess what? <laughs> I have a brand new radio show and the story is amazing. You will hear much more about it in the days to come. Uh, but for today, you are with me in this new opportunity for extraordinary women to talk about what it takes to live extraordinary lives, the lives Jesus died to give us. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about on my brand new radio show called Extraordinary with Kimberly Joy. So we're about to uh, record my producer Justin's right over there through the window. Are you gonna give me a thumbs up, Justin, or okay? And so he's gonna just signal, signal me and you guys are literally you're getting this as I'm getting it. I've never done this before. I have to somehow sound like I know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> so LOLs are allowed, laugh emojis are allowed. Um, if you have questions that you want me to address on future shows, please put them in the comments. I'm so excited to be able to do this and share the messages for women that God has birthed in my heart. So stay tuned, we're getting started here in about two, three seconds. Yeah, okay. Well, welcome to Extraordinary with Kimberly Joy. I am your host here to talk to you on Joy 1340 about what it means as a woman to live the extraordinary life that Jesus died to give you. I am so passionate about this topic and I can tell you why. A long time ago when I was a young Christian believer, I begged God to just be ordinary. I know that might sound strange to some of you, but I grew up in a subordinary life. That's my opinion. I'm not trying to sound judgy, but I knew that my life wasn't normal or ordinary. I looked at ordinary as like people who could pay their bills, had what they needed, had happy relationships, had a happy marriage, you know, raised kids because in a way that they knew how to raise kids. And I was 21 years old when I said yes to God and yes to walking with Him. And by the time I was 21, I already had three children and was married for three years. And the marriage was massively unraveling. And I didn't quite know how to raise the children that I had. And at 21 years old, I felt a call to walk with the Lord. I had already said yes to Jesus as a child. I had already um, even received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at 10 years old. I had encounters with God as a child. I was having prophetic dreams as a child, but I had no clue what it meant to walk with God and to serve Him. And really the simple way that I put it at that time was I didn't know how to live for Him. I knew things about Him. I knew things about my experiences with Him, but I did not know how to live for Him. And so at 21 years old, honestly, it was the same month I turned 21, and uh, I said to God, God, if you teach me how to live for you and show me how, then I will. But I knew enough to know, I don't know what that means, and the only way I'm going to do it is if God himself teaches me how. Well, shortly thereafter, people became to, began to come into my life and talk to me about what it meant to serve God, what it meant to live for him what it looked like to be a Christian in this world. And I started taking my first baby steps. Again, remember, I already wasn't living in an ordinary life. I was a 21 year old with three children and married for three years, got married at 18. And we were struggling in our marriage. We were struggling in our finances. We were struggling in relationship. I was pretty riddled with anxiety, with insecurity. Um, all that stuff was going on, but I was already living a life that most 21 year olds were not living. I was not ordinary, but you guys, my prayer was to be ordinary. And I'm not saying this to shame myself. I'm saying this for those of you out there who are aspiring for normal, okay? Because I wanted normal. Nothing about my life was normal. I wanted to be like everybody else. I wanted to have the white picket fence and be on my way to my first mortgage and own two nice cars, even if there were loans on them. I just wanted to be normal. I wanted to not always be 
oh, I don't know, the freak show when I walked in the room with my brood of children at such a young age. I mean, at 21, I probably still looked 16, and I'm walking around with these three little kids, and I actually got questions at that time about whether or not I ran a daycare. And for those of you who know me out there, you know that I went on to have more children. <laughs> I didn't stop at three because, again, I wasn't ordinary, but I couldn't see that. So I began to pray to God to make me normal slash ordinary slash what I call now mediocre. That was not my call, you guys. I'm so thankful God did not answer that prayer with normal and ordinary and mediocre. But fast forward in this journey, I began to say, Lord, I just want to be able to have the simple things in life. I just want to, you know, maybe even have the American dream. And I didn't hear him say this, but I can look back on my journey now and tell you that heaven was whispering to me. All of heaven was saying, you're shooting way too low. You're shooting way too low, honey. We have so much more for you than ordinary. So I continued on striving after this normal, ordinary life. But here's what the paradox was, my friends. The first big decision I made after saying, Lord, I want to live for you, and it wasn't very long after, the first big decision I made was to trust the Lord with my womb and allow him to plan my family. My husband and I, the husband I had at the time, agreed that this was God's call in our life. I thought we were in unity about this. I'll probably touch on that more in future episodes. What I thought to be true was not true. But at this time, I thought we were in unity in our walk with God. I thought that we were on the same path together. And so I said, Lord, you know, I heard this phrase. Somebody said this, this, this sentence. And it was, as women, we trust God with everything in our lives except our wombs. Now, I'm not out here preaching a doctrine. This is not a theology. This was a call on my life. And this is not a call in every woman's life. So if you're feeling like, oh, I need to, I need to undo this Facebook Live, I need to turn this radio station off because this lady's crazy. It was crazy, but it isn't for everybody. It was the crazy God chose for me to have the family he decided on. I knew in my knower that my first call was as a mother and that the first mission field that I was called to was my own womb. And so for those of you out there who feel that call in your life or you're living that call, I see you. I understand. It's not crazy. It's not a call for the faint of heart. Again, I have this extraordinary call on my life, and I'm still just longing to be ordinary, not seeing it for what it was. So I began to have more children. Now I'm 22 with four kids, 23 with five kids. By the time I was 25 years old, I had uh, five children and was pregnant with a sixth. And I uh, went on to have a total of 11 children, 11 beautiful, amazing lives, the best 11 people in the world. I could do many episodes talking about my children. I will uh, spare you all of the mom brags today. But I will tell you that uh, my children and I have been through the battlefield and we're on the other side victorious. Anyway, I'm sitting here pumping out kids like it's my job. I've got kids in every age group, every school age, every grade. I've got preschool babies, nursing babies, kids that are potty training, etc. Kids learning how to read. I was homeschooling them. I homeschooled as part of my call. Now I'm not just having them raising them, taking care of them, I'm educating them. I was in so deep, you guys, in so deep, while I was asking God to give me ordinary things. I hope that you're listening to this and you're saying, wow, what extraordinary things have I been called to and how have my prayers been ordinary? This was one of the biggest lessons of my 20s, moving into my 30s, was that if I was gonna do these extraordinary things, then my prayers needed to be extraordinary too. My faith needed to be extraordinary too. Because when I looked around in my life, I needed extra 
everything, okay? And the reason this show is called Extraordinary is because we serve a God who wants to put, who longs to put, who has put his extra on your ordinary. But so many of his daughters don't see it. So many of his daughters are missing it. It's going right over our heads. It went right over mine. I'm out here praying prayers for ordinary things, and God is like, honey, listen to the sound of heaven. Nothing about heaven is ordinary. Nothing about our God is ordinary. Nothing about us being made in his image is ordinary. Nothing about our call and the influence we were created to have in the world for the kingdom is ordinary. And so I looked around in my life and I needed extra diapers. I needed extra formula. I needed extra patience. I needed extra faith every day for how I was going to do this call. And that was just the emotional aspect of my call, not to mention the financial, not to mention the plates I was spinning as the keeper of the home, doing the meals, doing the meal planning, doing the shopping, taking the kids to their appointments, uh, all these, the organizational aspects, the 100 loads of laundry a week. And I was doing all these things that were already well out of the realm of ordinary for anybody my age. I didn't know anyone my age living the life I was living. I don't say that to brag. I just say that to highlight the fact that I was not ordinary. My call was not ordinary. I knew that when we were invited to parties, invited into people's homes, and they would come in with their 2.2 children, <laughs> and I came in with my 11 children, and they came in with their nice brand new vehicles, and for a long time we had to have two minivans just to schlep our kids around. I didn't yet even have one vehicle that would take my entire family to the same location. So part of my prayer was, Lord, those people, they have a car that fits their family. I, I would like a car that fits my family. And I prayed for that. I began to pray for what looked like ordinary. But you guys, this is what's so beautiful. Everything I asked God for, he gave me extra. He gave me extra. He showed me where I was my greatest obstacle. He showed me where my thinking was what was stopping me. He showed me where my own character deficits, woundedness, brokenness was standing in the way of my happiness and my joy. And he began to do such a deep, deep work in me in those days. What he did in my life is anything but ordinary. I know those of you listening, you extraordinary women out there, you know what I'm talking about. What he's done for you has been anything but ordinary. You have a story. You have a message inside of you for somebody that the extraordinary God who made you to be extraordinary wants to put his extra on every single ordinary aspect of you and your life. I'm here today in this studio at the Milwaukee Radio Group, amazed, amazed that I have this brand new opportunity to invite you with me to have conversations about what it looks like to live the extraordinary lives Jesus died to give us. There are daughters all over the globe, all over the globe, all over this city, all over your city, all over your area, longing for more. We were made for more. I'm here today just as one example, as one voice in the wilderness saying, more is not only possible with our God, it's probable. More is not just a dream you have that you should shame yourself for. Oh my goodness, women, we are so good at what I call shooting all over ourselves. We should this and we should that and we shouldn't this and we shouldn't that. And we're like, we shouldn't want so much more. Yes. We should. Jesus died to give us life and life abundantly, life to its fullness. I want you to think with me for a moment. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Think with me about the life Adam and Eve were given before sin. Did they have lack? Did they have depression? Did they have no joy? Did they have anxiety? Were they fearful about how their needs were going to be met? Did they live in a sparse, dry, weary land? 
I see you, daughter of God, living in that sparse, dry, weary land right now. And the Lord wants you to know it's a season. You're going to make it through. Yes, there are times in this life because of sin that we are finding ourselves in sparse, dry, weary lands. But we were not made to live there. We were made to come through the valley of the shadow of death and to fear no evil while we do it. That's the life that we were made for. That garden picture, that picture of heaven, that's what Jesus died to restore. The Bible said, cursed, says, cursed is him who hangs on a tree. Jesus was cursed, took the curse so that we could take back the promise. The promise for you is to have something so above ordinary to not live an ordinary life, to not see yourself as ordinary, to not see the possibilities for you as ordinary, to not think small, and certainly not to play small. And so today, my friends, my old friends, my new friends, wherever you're listening from, I want to challenge you to look around at what you're seeing with your spiritual eyes. Are you seeing the possibilities? Are they big? Are they so big they scare you a little bit? If yes, then you have extraordinary vision for the extraordinary faith that God placed inside you. If you see things as small, if you see things as impossible, as you see the future and if you are immediately focusing on your own personal limitations, that's not the mind of Christ. The Lord wants to give you His mind that's focused on His unlimited abilities, not your limited abilities. Yes, we are limited, we're human, but that's exactly why Jesus died, to remove limitations that we are stuck with when we're outside of Christ. But when we come into Christ, the lid is removed. The sky is the limit. The dreams in our hearts were, that were placed there by him are again, not just possible, but probable as we walk out our faith with him. Today, I wanna to challenge you to think about your life in through the lens of extraordinary. If he put his extra on your ordinary, what would that look like? What would it look like for you to walk out your call, the divine destiny, to listen to those nudgings, those promptings that are inside of you, that you can go more places, do more things, and be more in your life? What would it look like for you to run with that? It's time. It's time for God's daughters to run with the extraordinary possibilities, the extraordinary identity, and the extraordinary promises, promises that are ours in Christ Jesus. They're not, they're not bait that God dangles in front of us. He's not like that. I want you to know his heart. He doesn't dangle bait just to pull it away when you get close. He is offering you with an open hand all of his promises and the enemy wants you to think that they're completely conditional and that you're disqualified because you don't meet the conditions. I promise you, take it for, from someone who met zero conditions, okay? Zero. On paper, I had nothing for God. I had nothing to bring to Him. I had no degree. I had no experience. I barely even had that muster seed of faith. I didn't have a long history of doing great exploits for the kingdom. I had a long history of living a small, fearful, sinful life when I came to Jesus and said, teach me how to live for you. I had a long history of letting people down and making a big mess of almost everything I set my hand to. In fact, one of the greatest fears I had to face as a mother of many is my fear that I would mess it up, that I would be the reason the whole thing would tank that I would ruin my children's lives, ruin my life, and ruin my family. I had to bring that fear to God many, many times in the early years as I walked out my faith. And there were ways that I was helping bring destruction into my home in those days. Absolutely, there were ways that I was being used by the enemy in my own home, but I stayed the course. I sought the Lord. I lived by the scripture. If we don't have you, Lord, what else do we have? 
I believe it was one of the apostles who said, who do we have besides you? I knew that he was all I had. I had no contingency plan. I had no plan B. I had no backup. It was jump off the cliff with the Lord and possibly die or definitely die because I wouldn't take the leap with God. So, you know, take, pick your pain, <laughs> pick your pain. And I decided to pick the pain of facing my fears and doing hard things with God, knowing he was all I had. And if I didn't have him, I had nothing. So my friends, today I want to talk to you about two things, two things, the two most important things that you're going to need to live an extraordinary life as a daughter of God. Number one, the most important thing is you need to know your identity in Christ. You need to know how God sees you and you need to see yourself the same way. This isn't the same as knowing Bible verses. This isn't the same as t doing Bible studies. This isn't the same as saying, well, God says blah, blah, blah about me. Okay, all those things are good and produce great fruit. But when it comes to your identity in Christ, you will not walk in it until you see yourself the way God sees you. It's not enough to just say, well, God says yada yada about me. In other words, I want you to be able to close your eyes. And when you hear the things that God says about you, when you read the things that God says about you, you have to be able to close your eyes and see yourself as such. What do I mean by that? Well, when the Bible says you're forgiven and you're cleansed, and so many of God's daughters are walking around and all they see is their stains and all they see is their dirt. All they see is the mistakes they made, the things they botched, the plans they ruined. All they see is how they failed the Lord and failed the people that they love. You're seeing the identity that the enemy has for you. If you close your eyes and you see the stains while the Lord is saying, I call you clean, you have not yet received your identity in Christ. What if the Lord said, I see you as clean and I see you as whole, and you close your eyes and you see a clean, whole woman? Wow, that's going to change things. That's going to change you. And when you change in here, everything changes out here. The most important aspect of living an extraordinary life is your identity because all of your decisions and all of your thoughts are going to be rooted in what you believe about yourself to be true. And if you begin to see the you that God sees, let me explain something. God showed me long ago that even though he sees the areas we still need to work on, he sees the troubled spots in our lives. He sees what trips us up. Let, let me just say it how it is. He sees our sinful parts. Okay, He sees where we lack still. Even though he's not blind to that, he's not in denial about it. He's not like human beings. He doesn't have to deny the truth in order to see good in us. He chooses to see you as the final product that he has, because he's not bound by time, he has already made you into. Oh, that's so good. He chooses to see you as the final product that he's already made you into. In eternity, you're already finished. In eternity, you're complete. In eternity, you're whole, healed, restored, resurrected. Okay? So that's the you he chooses to see every day. Will you choose to see you as the final product? Work with me here for a moment. Wherever you are, if you're able to close your eyes, close them. If you're driving, please don't. But if you're able to close your eyes, I want you to close your eyes and imagine what you're going to look like in heaven, okay? Where there's no sin, no sadness, no defect, none. No defect, it's perfection. So what do you look like in heaven? Just imagine that with me. And you don't really even have to close your eyes because you can just think, well, I'll be perfect. It's so simple, right? Yes. It is that simple. We'll be perfect. We'll have a perfect revelation of God. 
and we will have no more insecurity. We will feel the perfect love of God. We will be bathing in that, so we're not going to feel any rejection. We will be walking in our inheritance with Christ, so we will not struggle with unworthiness. We're not going to get to heaven and go, oh, I should really go. I'm just not worthy of all this. Not going to happen because we're going to instantly be transformed into the complete, wholly saved versions of ourselves. That's the you that the Lord sees every day. Now you tell me that that's ordinary. You tell, try to prove to me you're just ordinary in God's sight. No way. He sees the extraordinary you that Jesus died to make you into and you've already been made into her in eternity. She's a done deal. Case closed, book closed, chapter closed in eternity. And that's how he sees you today. When you can see you the way he sees you, that's when you know you are walking in your true identity in Christ. And that might start in one area and work into the next. It might be a step at a time a thing at a time, a problem at a time. You might have to start with the worthiness and the stains and move your way into the identity he, give, he gave you that says you're not rejected, that you're not cast aside, that you're wanted, you're loved, and you're embraced. And so number one is your identity in Christ. Number two, you will not embrace that identity and walk wholly in it until you have roots in the Word of God and the Word of God is rooted in you because that true identity that true reality that we are created for is found in his word and so until and unless you become a woman of the word you cannot live an extraordinary life I know I'm sounding dogmatic because the word tells us that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind and we renew our mind in the word in truth so the two things you need to live an extraordinary life you got to be rooted and grounded in the word and you have to know your true identity in christ and both of those things come from a searching out of the word a studying to show yourself approved a deep dive into the word of god and it starts just with a hunger and the lord is your tutor and the lord is your teacher in hebrew the word is rabbi the holy spirit will teach and tutor you in the word to perfect you and to make you into the daughter that he designed you to be. Well, I hope that our first conversation about being the extraordinary woman that you already are in eternity was fruitful for you. If you have questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me on my socials. My channels are, my personal socials are at official Kimberly Joy. I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can also reach out to us through the Few Women, the Fellowship of Extraordinary Women, which is my organization, founded 10 years ago. We're here to help you live the extraordinary life Jesus died to give you through membership, through publishing, through three professional certifications. And we're available for extraordinary women all over the globe. We do what we do online as well. Go to thefewwomen.com for that information. And until next week, be extraordinary and tell your story for God's glory. Thank you. All right. I did it. Facebook fans and friends, thank you for sticking with me for this show. You just sat and listened to me for 27 solid minutes. So props to you if you're still with me for the show. I'd love for you to comment here right on Facebook right now on this live. Tell me what spoke to you. Tell me what you need to know more about. I'm here to have a conversation with you. There is going to be a, an eventual opportunity for you to call into the show. I am so excited about that. That's coming soon. In the meantime, this show will air on Joy 1340. You see that right behind me. Um, it's also on 98.7 FM in the Milwaukee area. So if you're in Milwaukee, you can listen that way. If you're not in Milwaukee, you can go to joy1340.com. And listen to the show it will be airing on Fridays at 3 30 every Friday at 3 30 extraordinary with Kimberly Joy on Joy 1340 and I can't uh, end this live and sign off without thanking my gracious 
Heavenly Father, for giving us a chance to reach women everywhere with his message for his daughters. There's so much more to talk about, so much more hope. There's so much more for us in the future if we align our thoughts and our minds with his ways and his word. I can't wait to bring you guys on this journey with me and watch you become the extraordinary women that you were designed to be. God bless you. I'm going to sign off on Facebook now. Can't wait to hear the feedback. Lay it on me. Love you guys.